and welcome back to the Knitting Diaries. This is episode 5 and today is Monday, April 18th. So I am a day late recording, sorry about that, but uh, I will explain a little, little while back. Um, my name is Inga Rós and I live in Eilstaðir, which is a small town in East Iceland. I live here with my husband and our three boys and yeah, this is this is my little knitting show for now. It's it's mostly knitting. I, I thought I would be doing some crochet as well, but I just haven't been in the mood. So maybe that will be some something we will explore explore later. You can find me on Instagram as inka.rose and on Ravelry I am Inka Rosu and I will put the show notes and all the links in the, in the down part on YouTube and on an, in our Ravelry group, The Knitting Diaries, yeah, yeah, I will put the show notes and, and put an episode thread also. Uh, we have an, a thread in, in our Ravelry group called Icelandic Knit and we have some entries in there and some, some chatter so if you have anything that could be considered Icelandic knitting with Icelandic yarn or, or a pattern or, or anything that you would like to share with us, please come and, and, and show us what you would like to know, look, like to see. Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my show notes yeah, and if you are a returning viewer, you might have seen last time that I am writing myself a pretty, com com pretty thorough script because I just seem to blank on anything when I start to record and when I'm editing I'm like, oh I wanted to say this and, and this but I just forgot so I'm not going word for word but it's there if I need it and to remind me of something and I wanted to show you what I'm wearing it's a dress I made I knitted this last year when I was in on maternity leave and it goes uh, I'm not tall enough uh, almost to my, my mid thighs and this is uh, knitted in alpaca drops and the pattern is called still light tunic and is a pattern on ravelry I don't think it's free it's probably a paid pattern uh, by Vera Valimaki she's I think by the spelling it's she's Finnish so I'm hoping I'm saying that right I'm not totally sure but I did uh, there are pockets and I to spice it up a little I put orange in the pockets uh, mostly because I was I thought I was running out of yarn and I went just to my local yarn store and found a, a, a yarn with the same gates and then the other day when I was cleaning out my stash I found three more skeins of this so I wasn't running out of yarn at all but yeah, I, I kind of liked having the orange pockets. It brightens things up a little. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start in my with my weekend review. Because if I don't, I don't do it. Uh, I think Icelandic people, we don't really like to talk about ourselves. So this is kind of, well, not hard for me, but not something I'm... I'm familiar by doing. So we start by this. Uh, last weekend, my husband and I, Atli, we went to something that is called here in Iceland, Arshautid. That is something that uh, his company invites us to and most companies, uh, most bigger companies at least, do this once a year, either in the fall or in the spring and his company does this in the spring and usually around March and that is when they invite us um, it's probably it's 
something like of a, a gala dinner or something like we get all dressed up and and have cocktails and there's a dinner and a show and it's really fun um so his parents came in and sat with the younger boys as Unnar was at a birthday party for a, a classmate of his a girl in his class was having a birthday party so he couldn't watch the boys for us so um so his um Atlas parents came in and watched them for us while we went to this also did. Um, and it was so really fun, but I had to go home early. They couldn't babysit, but till two in the evening, nay, ten in the evening. And that was the same time that Una's party was over. So at ten I left the Arsatid and went to pick up Unnar. And I just went home. But up until that, it was it was really fun, a good food and and yeah. Um, and last two weeks have been really busy at work. And last Thursday, I had to drive to a town, a really small town. Uh, actually, my husband is from there. It's called Bredalsvik, and it take me takes me about an hour to drive there. And every road I want to take from Eilstair, I have to go over a mountain or something, yeah, over high roads. And I took some pictures on the way that the sun was shining, it was a really pretty day. So I didn't mind getting out of the office at all and had to drive around in that beautiful weather. And I took some clips. I took a different route home, then I drove around the coastline and I put some clips uh, on that trip and I will put them in last, so I will end the show with that. If you are interested to see some mountain country living by the sea <laughs> on my way. Uh, what else would I do? Yeah, this Saturday it was Unna's birthday. He is my oldest son. He is now 13. And on his birthday, he had a, a party for his classmates or, and, his, and his friends. We can, we rented, it's just a, like a community, community hall or something like that, uh, that the kids can go to. We rented that and they had, there, there were 17, 13 year old boys, but they were really nice. We just ordered some pizzas and they rented the movie and then they were just, it was not, not as hard as we had a birthday for 26 year olds in December. <laughs> um, I really like uh, that in our town, it's not a rule or anything like that. You, you have a choice, but it is, <laughs> this is it's some guidelines that the parents set themselves around birthdays. Um, if you're having a birthday party, you invite all the class. Or if you have a girl, you, you invite all the girls. Or if you have a boy, you invite all the boys. And this is just to show that no one gets left behind. Because even though they are not, not all friends, I mean, if they don't hang out every day or something like that, there's... There is just the chance that there is always one or two boys that don't get invited to go anywhere. And that's just really sad and we don't want that. So, so when the kids start school, like August in, December, in the fall, uh, there is just a parent conference and we decide on these guidelines. Um, how many to invite or to just do you invite all the boys or all the class or something like that? And we decide the birthday presents as well. Um, stuff can be really expensive, toys and, and stuff like that. So we just decided on that everyone comes with a little envelope, a birthday card or something like that and just some money. So. Uh, in Unna's class, uh, they are now, as I said, 13, and that is now, the money is 1,000 kronas. I don't know how many, 
how many dollars that is. But uh, as I said, it's there are, there are 20 boys in his class, and if every boy comes with a thousand kronas, he he has twenty thousand kronas, which are I don't know. I will just I can put it in how much money that is. But that is plenty of money for a thirteen-year-old boy to buy something. And if he is collecting something or saving up for something special he wants to buy himself, then that is, or at least I think, because you can buy some stuff for 2,000, 3,000 kronos maybe here, but that is really, I mean, not everybody can do that all the time. And with 20 birthdays or more a year, that can be really expensive. So. And with August, it's 500 kronos. It's half of that, of that money that Unar gets, because you know he's only six. He doesn't need that money. That's much much money. So I I really like that. That this is a, at least something that we do here in Eystad, and probably in some other towns as well, or all over the world. I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm shaking the camera. Yeah, um, and last night we had a family dinner here at home. Uh, Atlas' parents were away, they were in Reykjavik, so they couldn't come. And his brother and his girlfriend couldn't come either. But that still means dinner for 14 people. And Atli was working all weekend, so all the prep and the cleaning and the taking care of the boys was up to me all weekend so and that's because I was just exhausted last night I didn't really feel like podcasting I just wanted to sit down and knit for a little while and I hope that's okay I'm sure you understand um yeah because I want this to be something that I want to do not something that I have to do on a pre decided date or anything so I'm as I said I'm sure you understand it's no no hard, hard feelings or I, I hope so but on to some knitting I have some clauderverkefni or finished objects and those are my fine and dandy look at them I am absolutely in love with these and this is my hand tied yarn that I that tight and I think it's it really brings out the flowers oh that's not focusing because my face is in but I really love this and uh, my hand that yarn is just 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon the gray one is cascade heritage sock yarn and just this plain gray they did turn out a little bit big. I know I said the last time that they fit like a glove, but but they are not loose or anything like that. I can totally wear them. I didn't do the pattern on the back of my foot because uh, I didn't feel like I wanted to do that. So it's just on the front. But I really like the heel. It's just a tip. Uh, I probably knitted a little bit too long on the foot here before I started the increases for the cassette. But I will definitely be making these again. It was a really fun pattern. And this is a part of the, the Brooklyn, what's it called? Brooklyn Network. Jacqueline of the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Network is hosting a call for this along with Amber of the Yarn Junkie podcast. And this is going into that they are already entered and everything. And this is my only finished object. I feel kind of, but as I said, work has been crazy. And yeah. So, I er am now with the Vinslu, work in Vinslu or works in progress. My little sweater. Cold Blair. This is an Icelandic pattern that I am translating into English, so you guys can knit this if you're interested. This, uh, this top down 
little sweater. It's got this really lovely pattern. Yarn overs. And, that's, and you, you put buttons to close it up. I think it will be really, really cute. I had finished one sleeve. And when I was looking at it, I thought it was a little bit not thin, too. Oh, yeah, just. So I ripped it out and I am not uh, decreasing. Uh, the pattern calls for decrease every sixth row. I am doing it in every eighth row. And I, I, will, I think this will be much better because. I don't really like too, too narrow, I don't know, <laughs> sleeves on my sweater, so I know that babies don't, yeah, it's for Hjörtur and he's too, uh, they don't have much of an upper arm or anything like that, but they still have arms and they have to fit in the holes, in the sleeves. I really like this top, uh, this bottom pattern, this, there's a, um, Two rows of pattern before the garter stitch edge. But I will definitely finish this really soon because I found that I am a monogamous knitter and I don't really like having too many projects on the go. I can have one sock project and then something else, a sweater or a shawl or, or anything. So, one small one and one maybe a little bit oh, I'm still shaking the camera sorry uh, yeah so one a little bit bigger so I haven't done any work on my Freya but I thought I would show you her anyway just to refresh your memory and she is living in my big project bag that I made from leftover fabric from my mom's closet um, and here she is, all tangled up and no place to go. But I had show you this last time and uh, I have, as you can see, joined the sleeves to the body. And I am starting to work the pattern in, uh, in stranded netting. And then I, this is a cardigan called Freya uh, by, the pattern is by Ragga Eriksdóttir and it is a free pattern on Ravelry. And it's a cardigan, so as I said, and that's because I am making a one stitch in every row. Oh, and you can't see this. Because I'm filming at daytime, guys. My husband is off work for, because he works in shifts. So I just threw out them, all of them. I said, I am going to record, stay out of the house for an hour. So I'm doing this at the daytime. But yeah, uh, there is one, there's one uh, pearl stitch in every row and then I am going to stick it and cut it open. And I will, will film myself when I do that. probably not so long because when I start on this again it was it will be quite fast um, yeah no uh, I cast on because I cast off socks and as I've been watching other podcasters it's a general rule if you cast off socks, you have to cast on again. So I cast on these. When? Um, Thursday, last time, I think. And these are Hermione's everyday socks. And this is my hand dyed yarn. And I love it. It's just these speckles of green and purple and orange. I think it's really pretty. Yeah, and I made myself a progress keeper because 
you don't get any fancy kind of stuff that, like that here. You don't get any progress keepers and all the the only stitch markers I can have are just this almost like paper clips. And they are so not fun. So I am making myself some look at it. It's a little bit and it's not focusing at all. But yeah, you get the drift. So these are my Hermines and maybe I will get these into the Harry Potter card with Katie of the Inside Number 23 podcast. I don't know. I don't uh, can't remember when it's going to finish. Um, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, those are my Mörke Vinsler, uh, or Workers in Progress. Last weekend I had some time for myself to do some dyeing experiments. Uh, I got... I was going to try to mix up the primaries to make... I don't know what the secondaries... Or at least green and brown and orange. The orange turned out really pretty. And but the green I have when I bought my primaries I bought a navy and that's really the dominant color. So from those I have already I won't be getting a really pretty vibrant green, but really a rather dark dark sort of foresty green. And that's okay, I, that's a beautiful color, but I I think I may have to order some more primary colors. But I, I did some experiments and with technique also. And this one I think is gorgeous. Uh, the blue could be more saturated but this I did by twisting it up in a skein first and dyeing the yellow. Uh, there is supposed to be some green in there too but it kind of disappeared in in the yellow, but that's okay. And then I tied some knots on it and put it in the blue, just just like this. And that's how you got get those yellow speckles because the then the color doesn't penetrate through the knot. So that was real fun. And this was something I had I had wanted to try both the technique and the colors because I am starting to form colorways in my head uh, that I can uh, I'm, I'm inspired by things in, an, in Icelandic nature so these when I get it the way I want it to be will be called northern lights this lovely blue and greens and yellows as I said, the, the blue could be more or darker, more saturated, but that will just happen next time. Then I tried this. And I'm not sure this is, will, will come up on camera or anything. But I dyed it yellow and red and orange. And then I over dyed it in black. Yeah, it comes. And so, so the really bright colors are coming through. The, the dark one and this is growing on me I didn't like it the first time I got it out of the pot but now I tend to do and as always I'm having really much fun trying to dye and and trying to get the colors I want that is that is fun also and trying new techniques um, this is the kind of green I was talking about this is a lighter shade, but that green, uh, the darker one is, is a really forest, foresty, leafy green. But I like this one. It's it's really beautiful. And these were just to uh, soak up some extra dye. There was in a pot, and I didn't want to waste it, so. Maybe I can show you. This is the green I'm talking about. The 
Dan hou ik dit focus. Ja, ik ben nog. But I, when I ordered my, my yarn, I ordered one comb, which I am dividing up in this mini skeins. Uh, it's one of them is 30 grams. So I am just experimenting with that now. And hopefully I will be doing some more dyeing in my near future. Um, I have had some, I'm not going to show you everything that I am buying because I don't really buy that much of yarn in my local store. Uh, well, yeah. Now I'm just practicing my dyeing and knitting and I have some in stash, so I am happy with that for now. But I did some swaps. Oh, I did a swap with Sarah from the Reluctant Sisters podcast. She commented on my episode thread a while back and, and told me that she was interested in making herself a Freya. So I offered to send her the yarn for that. Because Icelandic Lopi is not expensive. It's, yeah, it's kind of cheap, actually. And... So I offered to send her a sweater's quality, a uh, quantity of Plutelope, so she could make herself. She was going to make herself a sweater for a Rheinbeck, I think it's called, some yarn festival. We don't have any of those in Iceland. I really want to go to that, but at least um, the Sarah's package arrived and it was amazing. She sent me this into the world yarn. And look at it. It's beautiful. It's green and purple. I love it. And it's called Great Minds. And it's a uh, four ply 75 25 superwas merino and nylon. 100 grams and 460 yards. It is. It's brown and. I love it. And she sent me this project back. Uh, we talked beforehand, obviously, and, and decided on what we would send each other. And she also sent me this stitch markers from Knit New Haven. All the beautiful colors. And I love these too. Some notebooks and notepads. This beautiful pattern and she sent me buttons and I think I can definitely and I I think I will use this buttons for my from for my Freya cardigan just did really cute wooden buttons she sent me some minis from her and her sister Adrian look at them it's really pretty and I'm gonna, gonna go through them or anything but and she sent me some candy and stuff, but that is a long, long gone. So thank you, Sarah, for the wonderful packets. And uh, if you want to show, if you want to see the yarn that I sent her and the stuff I did, I sent her, you will probably just have to go and, and watch them, the podcast. It hasn't been shown yet, so check it out for the next, for next time. And um, don't know how to begin this. Uh, after my last po podcast, I think I when I showed you the snowflake onesie that I knitted for my sister's baby, uh, I mentioned that my local yarn store didn't have any snaps that I liked for them to use on that project. So a lovely viewer, Leslie. Uh, sent me a private message through Instagram and asking if I wanted her to send me some snaps. She is a, a really big sewist and she said I, I have so many that I will never finish them all if I, and if I wanted them. I said 
of course. Thank you so much. And and told her that, that I needed six on my on my onesie, and asked if I should send her something in return. And she said, "No, that's okay. I will. I will take a rain check and 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 you know, for the for the future. Maybe you can send me some someday." Okay, I said, "Thank you so much." And yeah, just raved about. But then I got a notice from the customs department, which is of course in Reykjavik, telling me that I had to send them a copy of the bill for my purchases. And I sent them back and said, there was no money changing hands here. This was just my friend who was sending me some snaps. Um, I would really have liked to see their face uh, when they were inspecting the package because and yeah, because this was the package that arrived, full of goodies. Um, and yeah, I don't think that they were very amused about this snap sending of mine. Um, these were the snaps. And she was supposed to send me this much, these six. But because knitters and crafters and yeah, are the most generous people in the world, I think. This is what she sent me. This is a lot more than six, Leslie. But I was just blown away by her generosity. And yeah, she sent me two skeins of yarn also. And this is Drops Fable, which is a Subos. Yarn, 250 gram skeins, and these will be probably socks for me. I love this color, it's just this aqua blue with all the specks of pink and orange and purple and, and this rust color here. I like this a lot. But that's not all. There were zippers. Of all shapes and sizes. And fabric. Look at it. It was a huge packet. And this lovely cut that I'm not going to read to you. And this gorgeous product pack. And the note uh, reads among other things, thought that I would make the postman's trip worthwhile. Yeah, it was. It is gorgeous, Leslie. Thank you so much. And this, yeah, it it's, has some of this, uh, which I guess are, what's it called? Zipper pull. Yeah, I was amazed. Thank you again, Leslie. I really, really love it. I have another packet on its way, which is also being held hostage by customs. And if you watch uh, Gabby from Once Upon a Corgi podcast, you, <laughs> you may not have understood her, her when she was trying to pronounce my name, but I won um, a huge uh, she uh, she and Melissa of the home, Spicy Homemaker and Brittany of the Sip and Stitch podcast are hosting the knitting games and they were making sweats which are sweaters made into pads and Gabby won some podcaster challenge for that and she won a really big packet to gift to her viewers and I won that and they again are sending me <laughs> some notice asking me to send them a copy of, a, of the bill for my purchase and, uh, and again I have to send them no no it's no money changing hands it's just a gift or a prize I won uh, for a podcaster 
I'm not really, really sure what they think of me at the Costumes Department in Reykjavik. But uh, I will tell you a little bit more about uh, the packets and the, and the Hunger Games. Oh, the Knitting Games in my next episode when I have the packets with me, I hope. But on to our giveaway. I closed the thread yesterday for our 200 subscribers giveaway, which when I started it, it was 197, but it's now 208. So thank you for your the new subscribers for joining and subscribing and, and showing the support uh, that you liked what I am showing you. That came out. Yeah, okay. Just gonna go with it. Uh, yeah, so I closed the thread yesterday around noon and last night I did draw from the giveaway, from the thread. There was some chatter uh, and someone had posted twice and that's that was fine. I didn't specify that, that, that there should not be any chatter, but I put up in Excel uh, the valid posts and drew from there. Uh, and um, you're just gonna have to trust me because I didn't uh, snap pictures of anything like that. But I drew a winner and she is on, on Ravelry, she is Magnini, M-A-C-N-I-N-I. -N -I. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that but right, but she is Nicole from Germany. So Nicole, when you see this, please get in contact with me and let me know that you have. You will be getting a, a sock size project bag from this fra fabric. I haven't quite finished it, so I hopefully I will get to that tonight. And I will send you a link to a website, Icelandic website, so you can choose the colors. Or if you don't want to choose the colors yourself, uh, you will you can let me know and I can choose the colors for you. Uh, yeah, plus this, a bag from this, you will be getting two skins of Kampgarten. So please get in touch with me as soon as you see this and let me know that you have won and I will be in touch with you to send you that link. Yeah, I have been talking really fast, haven't I? Because I, do, I didn't know how much time I had, but this is already 37 minutes and plus the segments and uh, clips I'm gonna show you from the drive, this is going to be, yeah, I think, quite long. But uh, as I said, uh, this is probably it for this week or for this two weeks. Thank you for watching and subscribing and and hitting like and commenting. I, I really like getting comments, both uh, here in on YouTube and and in the Ravelry group. So if you have any questions. There is um, a question thread in in the Ravelry group. So if you have any questions about me or my knitting or or life in general in Iceland, ask away, and I will either as answer them here on the podcast or or on the thread itself. So yeah, thank you, and see you see you in in another two weeks. Bye.